Hunter House. Oh, I didn't see you there. I was just enjoying this book on murder. Anyways, welcome to Will's Holiday Special, a video where we celebrate the past year in stories with themes you'll probably never be able to decipher until you check the IMDB trivia page. Today, we're going to start with a little story about togetherness, hardship, and cannibalism. Our story begins in a faraway world on the Outer Rim. Beneath a space debris filled sky is an intrepid band of explorers braving the cold, heading to the North Pole to start a new research colony. Blah, 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 theme, blah, blah, theme, theme, theme. theme. Our travels have landed us on the northern coast of the Reindeer Hip Eye Sheet, ready to brave the harsh climate. Leading our band of explorers is one Santa Claus, born and raised on the planet Polis. He is quite jolly in the face of danger, does not shy away from constructions. Next we have the twins, McCready and Childs. Both have experience with Arctic bases and otherworldly creatures. Finally, Svetlana of the planet Nordia joins the crew to generally be better than the rest of them and provide sanity when we inevitably get a male psychic drone. An initial survey of the land shows several geothermal geysers we can use for power. Lots of rock and ore for materials, but unfortunately little in the way of wood and wildlife. One concern on everyone's mind is the mysteriously sealed stone building, which gives off an aura of evil. Here's hoping what lurks inside stays dormant forever. Work begins quickly on a shelter, using some of our precious wood before we can set up a proper stone cutting area. A stockpile for our things will do nicely here, and of course, it'll keep the food cold. Sleeping rolls were packed, but we'll only have each other for warmth tonight. During the day, it seems to be around 20 degrees Fahrenheit, but at night, if you can call it that, it dips far below zero. One can't forget to have fun, though. A horseshoe pin is a favorite of the troops. The rest of the day is spent building, organizing, and hoping we last the night. After scouting the geothermal geysers, we decide to build on one to the southeast. Not only is it the closest, but it is also near several others should we need to expand in the future. Now that power is underway, heaters can be installed, as well as a kitchen. Although there isn't much here to cook, we'll have to make do. Perhaps some hydroponics will be necessary in the future? For now, the snow hares are providing meat. Building a barricade for safety, we'll need a place for cover if we're under attack. I think we're too far north for any roving bands, but when a hungry polar bear comes along, we'll be ready. Am I going crazy? I can still hear the strike of the pickaxe, long after the workday finished. We spent all day clearing out a cave for our new home. The natural stone walls will keep the warmth while providing concealment from passers-by. I had the idea to cut a small hallway for our heaters, allowing vents to flow the heat into our bedchambers. Time for sleep has come, but the pickaxe strikes on. The stone cutting station is ready to go. Now with a steady supply of bricks, we can finish construction of the new base quickly. I don't know how much longer this wooden tomb will last. Several of the crew, and by that I mean all of them, have asked to formally name our troop. It took some deciding, but we settled on the Explorers, although Svetlana's suggestion of amalgamation of butt bum was seriously considered. And of course, the outpost was unanimous. The North Pole. With the base mostly finished, it's time to start moving everything from the old wooden shanty. It served us well in our first few weeks, but we certainly won't miss it. We decided to build a nutrient paste machine, McCready claims it's the answer to all our woes. Meanwhile, we've been attacked by a few stragglers, most likely pirates hopped up on their own stuff, running away at night. We may have used their meat. Traitors! Now it's time to stock up on provisions. Although, I hadn't thought to take money. We hatched a plan. I spoke with the leader of the Zixasar Union Caravan Green, and he agreed to help us open the ancient building for a split of the spoils. Several mechanoids came rushing out, but we managed to fight them back. We suffered no casualty because of a great bit of cunning tactic I call hiding, and Green said the men he lost were easily replaceable by slaves. This is certainly a win-win situation. I never imagined this expedition going so well so soon. Rakriti went to open the cryopod inside the room. What a fool! Whomever was in there jumped out and attacked him. Thankfully, I was nearby and rushed to help. With the ancient woman dead, we picked the place clean. I think this will make a fine dining room and kitchen. More good news! Svetlana and McCready have decided the world is an absolute void if alone, so they're making the best of it together. Thankfully, I live across the hall. Work continues converting the old room to a bit more usable space. I will report progress when I have another chance. For now, this is the end of my transmission. 
See you on the other side.